All right, so here she is, the 2023 KTM 125. Brand new, point zero hours. We're gonna be uh, going through this thing top to bottom, uh, checking out in particular uh, the engine and its design and performance and <clears throat> Checking out the uh, the TPS circuit, which is right here. Uh, evaluating the reed system in here. Uh, power valve over here as well. We're gonna kind of just go through this thing and, and, and learn together. I'm gonna check compression, bone stock, unfired, uh, you know, 500 feet above sea level or so to see what, what the compression is for the, for the engine. Um, and I'm gonna check the, again, I'm gonna also check the TPS circuit just to establish initial voltage. I, I feel it's a great thing to do um, when you get a, a brand new bike. That way you can write your compression down and take some notes. And I'm expecting this to probably be around 180 PSI or so, being a fresh piston and rings and bore um, and it's just good to document because you get about 10 to 15 percent loss of compression if you read it after five to ten hours that's usually an indication that your rings are getting worn and it's time to to service the motor um but actually when it's kind of silly little thing we're going to talk about the spark plug because the heat range that they use is a little different this time um and we're just gonna kind of, this is mostly gonna be around the motor because let's face it, the suspension is a suspension. It's air forks, it's, you know, the exact shock. Um, so that's not really all that different from what KTM has run in the past uh, couple of years, but a lot of talk about the silencer on all of these two strokes. Why is it so short? Why is it so stubby? And uh, we're gonna kind of talk about the stinger length of the of that pipe that that runs from the end of the exhaust where that coupling is right there and how long that canister is um and check out the uh the stinger in that and compare that to an aftermarket i'm going to go with an fmf setup on here i believe the core is i'm going to assume is going to be bigger on the fmf to allow a little more exhaust uh, to get out of that engine faster um, and also talk about t tuning the engine uh, and porting and cylinder and head mods. The, the tuner in me and the rent, you know, the mechanic, all I want to do is tear into that right now. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, I, I think that actually might be not a desirable thing right now because there's no way to, you know, once you cut a head and modify it or port the cylinder or do a little epoxy work, you have to. Re, in normal cases, you would retreat the carburetor and readdress it and jet it fatter or, or leaner, depending on what you did. Um, and you cannot do that with this bike. So the ECU is locked and it's sort of considered what's a, a closed system. It doesn't understand anything from the, from the, from the engine and feedback, so to speak. So it doesn't, we can cut the head and increase compression and that's going to make the engine run more efficient and build a little more heat. Uh, however, the, the, the ECU is not going to be able to compensate for that. It's not going to know that it's running leaner. So it's not going to send more fuel than what it's programmed from, from the factory. So it's just going to continue to push whatever it uh, is programmed to push when it should be probably jetted fatter. Um, the sensor uh, package that's in this, there's a, it's going to monitor air fuel, AF. It's going to probably, I would have to dig deeper, but I'm sure there's probably about three or four sensors on this that are going to monitor air fuel, temperature, potential air density for elevation. So there's, there's a few things that it's going to know from the air box, but it's not going to know any changes that are made inside that motor. And traditionally, like in a four-stroke, if you cut the head, if you um, do some treatments to the valve 
system and have an aftermarket ignition or an ignition that's unlocked, you can put it on a dyno, you can add more fuel and compensate. The, like the Vortex has fuel trims on it where you can add fuel because they know that, hey, if you improve the flow, you're gonna need to feed it more. It's a big air pump. Well, this ECU under that seat doesn't, doesn't know any better. So we're gonna, we're gonna investigate that. And it's probably, a, I think if there's a, some two stroke tuner guys out there that really just wanna dive in there and do a traditional cut and deck and port and this and that, I, I think you're gonna have problems. And trust me, there's nobody around that, that wants to dive in there more than I do, but I also know sometimes less is more. Um, and in talking with Vortex, they are not going to be offering an aftermarket ignition uh, for this bike. I did speak with someone inside the GET community, the GET community, and uh, they say they're making one and they're testing it now. So that's for these 125, 250, and 300 two-strokes that are coming out. Uh, as far as an aftermarket ECU tunable option, I think the GET system may be the only thing that really is gonna allow someone to to tune this. So I'm also gonna talk about the, these this all-in-one uh, start and stop button. Um, and if you accidentally hit the start button while it's running, it throws a code off of that little uh, hour meter right here. And it's a dealer only clearing of the code. You can't just unplug the battery and it goes away. So I'm gonna investigate, sorry to say, reverse engineering this and putting a, a start switch over here and then a kill switch over there so they're separated. You can accidentally bump that pretty easily uh, with your hand, your arm, and, and even when you're riding it or trying to put it on the truck or you know whatever. It just seems like it's a cool, nifty thing to have it in all in one, but in actuality, I think that it may is already caused problems with people. So I'm going to look inside the back, you know, side of this and find out where that lead goes and see if there's something that can't be done about creating a, uh, a left switch, right switch. And uh, I don't know. We're going to dive in. We're going to talk about the fuel that goes in here. Um, it's very specific to 40 to 198 octane in the manual for the 125s. 250s and 300 SXs, 60 to 1, 95 octane. So refer to your manual. I kind of was watching some initial videos and uh, of a couple months back when they were doing the testing of this, and oh, 60 to 1, 60 to 1. That, that may be true for the 250 and the 300, but the 125 is 40 to 1. And it is also important to, to note that a friend of mine, Pat Leonard, who's highly intelligent when it comes to TBI and EFI systems, uh, kind of pointed me in the right direction in the manual too and said, hey, check out the, the JASO FD rating for the, for the two-stroke oil that you need to mix in this. They're recommending it's a JASO certified, which is uh, an acronym for the uh, Japanese Association of like oil grading. And there's certain uh, qualities of the oil that are, are better than others and they recommend certain, certain premix oil. So... I was initially thinking, oh, old school mix of my traditional bean oil or, or castor oil, which I love because I love the way it smells and I love the film protection that it offers the two-stroke because it never the engine never really gets hot enough to burn off all the castor. Um, but So that means it's kind of stuck to the cylinder walls and the rings and stuff. But it does gum up your power valves. But then I was reading in more in depth, and that's there's no castor that I can find that has a JASO rating, JSO rating. So we're going to have to evaluate other options. I don't want to certainly put something in here just because this is what I always ran. And, and it's not really the right thing to run in this. And really sticking to that 40 to 1 ratio, you know, is, is super important because that's what this ECU and, um, you know, ignition system wants to see. Oh, I've, oh, I've always run 32 to 1. You, you know, that may lean out your bike, believe it or not. I know it sounds crazy. Like, what do you mean? It's 32 to 1. It's more oil. Yeah, but it's a, 
your air to fuel just leaned out because that 32 to one is gonna travel a heck of a lot slower through your circuit than the 40 to one. So this is kind of confusing and wordy, but super important for everybody to pay attention to these specs that are in the manual and, and look it over and read. And this is not just a traditional kick it over and go rip around YZ125 and feed it fuel and it'll go. This is super complicated. Um, and they've made it e very easy for the end user, but you just got to know where to draw the line on, how, you know, on pushing things and sticking to what they tell you to do because it's, it's proven. They, they're going to be able to at least stand behind what, they, what, they've, what they've given us. So in any case... Here she is, man. She's looking good. I can't wait to kind of dive into some of the, the different aspects of this and start a little video documentary on along and, um, and, and post this online for people to learn and understand. I am not by any means the most uh, educated and or claim to be the, the, the tuner of all tuners. I just happen to be a super big geek who loves this sort of stuff and uh, I dig it. It's a super cool looking bike. And I uh, hope you guys and girls who, who get these bikes will be able to take what I've posted and maybe apply it to, to something um, that, that works for you. But if, again, a disclaimer, you know, nothing I'm really going to do is going to be uh, something I, I, you should do. It's something elective. You, you want to dive in and you want to know that I can only show you what has worked for me and what, what has been proven to show some good results and should you decide to to take it upon your own accord to do it i mean it's one of those that's one of those things so hope you enjoy it man i'm gonna start doing little videos and getting this thing posted man take care god bless bye